I want to share with the group this morning um, a very unique visit I had with one of our patients. And I've been pondering this, this, this visit for some time now. Uh, it was a, we had a new admit, new patient. He was an elderly Caucasian guy. And when I went to visit with him to do the initial assessment, um, he was home alone and his, their house had been recently flooded by a flood uh, situation that we had in the area. And uh, the house was under repair. So he was living in this trailer. I went up to the door and I knocked on the door and uh, he said, come in. And when I opened the door, I just sort of peeped in before just walking in on him. And when he looked up and saw my face, um, the gentleman became startled, um, almost as if he saw a ghost. So I went on in and I uh, shared with him and, and, and uh, who I was and everything and introduced myself and, and being from Canon Hospice and to let him know that we were there, you know, to help him and his family and to support them in whatever way that we possibly could. And the whole while I was there speaking with the guy, he never did look up at me um, uh, until the first time when I first walked in, he looked at me. But after that, he never looked at me again. And he never really fully answered me. He always answered me with a, a grunt of some sort. And so I recognized at the time the fellow was feeling very un uncomfortable with me being there. So uh, I decided that I would go it on and I would leave. And of course, when I left, I decided at that point too that that would be a declined visit. Uh, because the fellow seemed very uncomfortable about me uh, visiting with him and being there. And of course, like I said, he was home alone. And usually when I go to visit with our patients and, and they're like that and that state home alone and, and they're somewhat, you know, semi bed bound, I usually don't stay long anyway. I'll let them know I'll come back at another time when someone else is there. So three weeks later, I found myself back in this fellow's driveway knocking on his door. And I kept asking myself, why am I here? You know, what am I doing this for? This fellow is uncomfortable with me, he doesn't really want me here. So I knocked again, same thing, scenario went over, he said, come in, I went in, same thing, he looked at me and dropped his head and did not look at me again and uh, would barely answer any of the questions I would, I would ask him. And so I left again and I decided again, I said, well, no, this is definitely a decline. I'm, I'm not coming back here anymore. Well, behold, three weeks later, I found myself back again and I'm asking myself, what am I doing here? Why am I doing this? You know, it's obvious that this, this guy does not want me here. The same scenario took place again. When I went into the trail, it was the same thing. He wouldn't look at me, wouldn't talk. He would just do these little grunt things and I would ask him questions. So I left again. I said, definitely, definitely, it's the third time. This, this is definitely a decline. Three weeks later, I found myself back again. This time they had moved into the house and his wife was there this time. His wife was a very gentle, kind and, and welcoming and, and an inviting person. Uh, well, uh, I enjoyed talking with her and she enjoyed talking with me. She brought me to the room where he was again. He was lying in the bed and he was reading this, this, this novel and he was looking at uh, some old time Westerns on television. And so I began to talk with him. I said, well, you know, I gotta get this guy to say something to me some way, somehow. So I realized, I said, okay, we're in the football season. I said, let me ask about LSU. I said, maybe he's a fan of LSU or something. So I went, started talking about LSU and I asked him, you know, how do you think they were going to do this year? And, you know, it looked like they're going to be pretty good and so forth and so on. Same scenario. He wouldn't look at me. He would just give these little grunts, you know, and, and it was just annoying, the, the grunts, you know, just trying to get him to talk. So I told him, I said, well, you know, Louisiana is a sportsman paradise. I said, I see you have a pond right here in the backyard. I said, do you ever go out and just cast out, you know? I say, the weather's real beautiful. I say, you ought to just have someone to roll you out in a wheelchair and just, just sit out in the weather. And of course, the same old scenario. So I asked him about his novel. I said, what's the, the novel you're reading? And so he just turned the novel over for me to read it, <laughs> the name of it for myself on the back of it. And so I did. And so I, I asked him about the, the Western. I said, well, I see you enjoy looking at the, the old time Western. I say, so do I. I said, I think you're great. And, um, he didn't say much at all at that time again. So I found myself back there again and um, talking with him again that particular time. Finally, when I left that time, I was getting ready to leave. He spoke to me and he said, say, hey, wait a minute. He said, what did you say your name is again? 
I said, my name is Brother Dale. He said, well, Brother Dale, he said, let me tell you something. He said, you are welcome back to my house at any time. So I've been baffled about that for some time now. I'm not sure what really took place, what that was really all about. But once again, I, I do know the hand of God was in it. And I thank God for it and for the experience. And I, I do hope that uh, I'm just calling Mr. Alexander. Mr. Alexander really received something very valuable for him out of that, that experience. And I just want to say in closing, someone once said that I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. And I went back and I pondered through Psalms 119, 133. But David prayed and lift up his voice and he said to the Lord, he said, order my steps in your word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. The word of God also says, though we walk, it is not in us to direct our own steps. And then I went back and I looked at a song and the songwriter said, lead me and guide me, O Lord. For if you lead me, I will not go astray. The Lord ordered all of our steps a long time ago. He called us to do what we do, even before we were in our mother's womb. And Jesus says to each of us, I have ordered your steps. I will keep your way. I will be a light unto your path and a lamp unto your feet. I will hold you up. I will still the waters. I will quiet the wind and the storms. I will fight your battles and I will keep you from falling. And so I say this morning, hold to God's unchanging hands for God has laid his hands on you and he will not lose you to the deep. So walk on through the winds, walk on through the storms and the rain, walk on through the doubt and the disappointments, walk on through the rejection and the opposition. Do what God has called you to do because you have all the steps. And as much as you know, your labor is not in vain. Let us bow our heads in attitude of prayer and let us pray. <clears throat> our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name, Father God. Heavenly Father, it's a, it's a new day, Father, for which you have made, Lord. And we're going to have a great day, Father God, because you made it and you are in it. We're going to have a great afternoon, a great evening, and a great night. And Father, we thank you for who you are for all that you have done, for all that you're going to do in our lives, Father. For surely, Father God, you have been so good to us. Thank you for our fellowship and our time of sharing here together this morning with each other, Father. Thank you for your peace of mind, Lord, and thank you for your joy of heart. And Heavenly Father, every day is a holy day, a good day, just because you made it and that you dwell in it and help us to walk by your faith and not by our sight, Heavenly Father. Order our steps in your word, Father. Lead and guide us, Lord, every day. Send your blessings and your blessed anointing, Lord, that you be glorified on earth as you are in heaven. Bless and lift up our canon family, Lord, Lead us in your way, always fighting, Father, for what is right, for what is good, for what is acceptable in your sight. Bless our world leaders, Lord. Help them to lead and to walk, Lord, as you are a light unto their path, Father God. Bless our sick and bereaved, Father God. Give them the precious ministry of your healing and your precious spirit. Give them, Father God, a brighter day. Lord, this is our prayer as we pray in the mighty name of your blessed darling son, Jesus the Christ, and we say amen.